I'm just waiting to see that I've actually gone live on Handelabra before I do anything else here. I've actually gone live. All right. There I am. See, we have a few people in the chat. So, um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is um, my first time doing the dev stream. Um, we did one last week with did one last week with uh, last year we had kind of a presentation on the on the code but this is just sort of um, me getting some work done and you guys being able to um, see what's going on as they work so I'm gonna get started um, so the thing we're going to do today is that um, I'm going to start doing some bottom of the ninth engine work um, which has sort of been my main focus with bottom of the ninth since we got started and um, and then once I'm done that uh, I'll pass off the work that I've done to John and he can start uh, showing you um, how he converts that um, into stuff in the UI and um, yeah, so we'll be working on a particular card today from the game, um, Pete R. Schmidt. Um, so if you're not familiar with the game, just for a, a quick overview, um, during the course of the game, you either get uh, red or white tokens, and those allow you to use abilities. So uh, the red ability would be uh, plus or minus to a swing roll. A white ability would be to re-roll the swing, and if you get both of them, then you're allowed to use your special, or you can use two of these. Um, and his special is if you roll a one, two, or three, you may flip the swing die to its opposite face. Um, and these squares around these mean that they have to be natural values. Um, so if you modified them, then those don't count. And then his trait is, um, when there are two or less balls uh, in the pitch count, Pete may give the pitcher one relief um, to set the swing result to one versus any uh, ball pitch. Okay, so let's get started on that. So the first thing I like to do um, is uh, create a, uh, a test for, for whatever I'm about to do. Um, and I just kind of write the test up until the point that I expect it to fail because I haven't implemented the, the thing yet. So flip die because we're see we're um, we're flipping this the swing dice here, um, and then we already have one called flip die. So I'll just call this uh, flip die iron grip. Okay, we start a new game. And uh, you can just go like this, and then it'll just use whatever characters, but we want to specifically use the batter. Um, Pete R. Schmid. Okay. All right, so now he's in the game. And so what we want to do um, to check that this works at all is have him roll, uh, let's say, a three for now. Um, and then when he gets to modify his swing die, um, he can flip it to the opposite face. Um, and a quick trick to remember what the opposite face is, is that uh, it's 7 minus the, the number um, you already have. So, it, so 1 would become 6, um, 2 would become 5, and 3 would become 4. So, um, so let's do that. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that... Uh, Pete gets both of the um, the pitch dice, so make batter gain double. Okay, and then go to um, uh, modify swing roll. Okay, so what this is doing, um, if you're not super familiar with the rules of bottom of the ninth, um, I apologize because some of this won't make sense to you. Um, but, you know, I don't want to spend too much time doing that because uh, the point is just to kind of let you see myself working on this. So 
Um, he gets both of these, and then it goes to a state where he modifies the swing, swing roll. Um, so, assert that his uh, batter special is available. Um, and that's just making sure that, like, okay, now he can use this. And um, so what we want to do is make sure that he rolls one of these. So actually up here I'll do fix dice results. This is a way to get more consistent results in the uh, in things to, to begin with. So let's say strike 3-3. Um, three, three. Okay. So now he uses his batter special ability. Okay. And assert swing die value it's sh now it should be four so he goes here uses his ability it was a three and now it's a four and uh, I expect this to fail because I haven't actually implemented him yet so this shouldn't naturally happen so I'll run that and sure enough it fails um, so he does get the uh, the double here and this is just showing kind of the different states it's going through um, and it compares uh, pitch tokens and then when it goes to modify swing roll it's saying make sure his special is activated well it's not because we haven't defined that yet um, and you'll see that it's actually giving me a, some warnings here um, I put those in just so that it's a little easier to debug if I don't happen to know what's going on so in order to do that uh, we'll go into the card list here uh, he's a batter Oh, look, it jumped right to him. How convenient. Um, okay. And so, yeah, these need to be formatted sort of the... W th this was just sort of placeholder to kind of remind me what these things are. But this isn't actually what we need. Um, we need something more like this, um, where they become objects and have class types. So I'll just uh, copy these over here. And then uh, I can get rid of these ones. And I'll move this here. And iron grip. This is a clap class flip die, and you'll see why in a in a minute here. Um, and then move this here and I'll take I'll take care of his tr care of his traits later um, I'm just worried about uh, you know getting this getting this special working here um, and then so for his double ability, um, it's MVP or any two. So MVP or choose any. Uh, this is a choose any here. Um, but it's or, not and. So I'll change that to or. And then it's two, not one. Okay. And this will probably give me some warnings that, um, that these don't exist, or this one doesn't exist yet, is my, uh, my assumption here. All right. Right, uh, provided class type of take ball, which could not be converted to an ability class type. So the ability class types just tell us which ones um, we recognize as a program. Um, and that just makes it so that, you know, if, if I have typos in here, uh, it won't try, it, try to go ahead and fail. And then it's not obvious why that it was just human error. This is like, this doesn't exist. I can't make it. So um, I'll just make it exist here. Take ball. Okay. And now let's run that. Okay. Um, cool. So, batter rules, modify. Yeah. So now. Um, 
So this is a class flip die, and this one actually already exists. Um, if I go to my controller here, I can look at all the abilities that currently exist because unlike Sentinels where we program um, each card uh, specific to that card because there's just so many things it could do that there is no point in encapsulating it. In bottom of the ninth, um, we actually just have a list of abilities and then a card um, just says which abilities they use and can prov com um, provide some simple parameters. Um, and so for the base edition, that's almost one new ability per card. Um, but there's there's sort of a lot of overlap in the expansion, so this is more to save time later than it is to save time now. So, so if we go to uh, we have, so you can see here we already have the uh, the flip die um, ability, so that's good. And the one that currently uses it, if we do a search here, is Hurricane Patrice. Um, so he uses it here, and if it's, so the if die, if it's the control die, and if its values are 2, 3, 4, or 5, then the die that he can flip is the pitch die. Um, and so, just sort of a human readable description here. If contr control roll is 2 to 5, Patrice may flip the pitch die to its opposite face. So this is pretty similar. Um, and the reason it wasn't working here in Iron Grip is because we didn't provide um, the type of types of parameters it's looking for so we didn't provide any of this information so if we go back here so if die so which die are we looking at so we're looking at um, uh, if you rolled a one two or three um, it doesn't say swing die but um, that's what it is so we'll put that in there and then one two or three so if natural number range one two three and then we don't have fourth one here and the die we flip is also the swing die okay so let's see if that gets us closer to what we're trying to do all right so um, so so what's going on here um, is that uh, from the pitch tokens um, he's won both the red and the white one um, it looks like I've lost my connection on Steam, or on, sorry, not on Steam, on Twitch. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can still see me or not. Just take a second here to make sure I'm still, still going on. All right, looks like it was just for me. Um, by the way, if you have any questions for me, if you at Jean of Marc me, um, that'll make it stand out um, so that I notice it. Uh, Jeremy's asking me a question here. Are you recording locally? I th yes, I think so. Um, I said it to. Um, but it has disappeared off my screen, so I can't verify. Uh, I'll just do a quick check here. Sorry about this. Just want to make sure I'm getting what Jeremy needs. Uh, let's see. see it recording locally um, I hope it is <laughs> I, I told it to so um, but anyway uh, sorry about that um, okay so right so back here so he gets his uh, double ability and then I have it so that it automatically uses their double ability because most of the time you want to 
Um, and that makes it so that when it goes to the modify swing roll, um, it activates their special. And there's, activating it just means that it's available for the player to use. Uh, it doesn't mean that they have actually used it yet. Um, so if you go to uh, if you go to the um, back to the test here, that's why I specifically use batter special ability. And then we check to make sure that the value is four, um, which it is. Cool. So um, let's just uh, expand the test here. So we want to make sure that when it's two, we get five, and when it's one, we get six. Um, so he is going to hit the ball here. So we will fix runner safe. And evaluate run rolls. And basically he's going to hit the ball and he's going to make it to the base safely. Which he does. Um, and... Uh, but then we actually want him back at the bat again because we want him to roll a five. Actually, maybe it's e a little easier if I just make it so that um, it's a ball and then I don't have to worry about all this. Um, yeah, that'll be better. So go to throw pitch, assert pitch count. And so we just check to make sure he has one ball and zero strings. Um, because if you roll higher than the pitcher for a ball, then you get a ball. Um, or sorry, a strike. So this isn't actually how you would use it um, but in the game, but it'll, it'll just keep the batter there. Okay, so then we, so this, I'll just comment this here. Pete uh, rolls a three, changes it to B4. Now here, Pete rolls a four, the two changes it to B5, okay? So similar, similar kind of thing here. Um, so this time it's five, two, um, right. And then now he has two strikes. Cool, that works up to there. And then finally, Pete rolls a one, which changes it to be a six. And this time we'll let him hit the ball. Um, so that, uh, you know, we don't just strike him out using his own ability. <laughs> um, so, fix crush results. Um, we, we just want a regular run for his crush results here. Fix safe. And this just means when he runs, he'll be safe when he arrives. Um, go to evaluate run rules. And then it should be six. Let's see. I might have uh, missed something there, but we'll just uh, run that and see. Oh, no. Good. Um, so, uh, Kiddo here throws the ball right down the center. Peach mid hits it. So, yeah. Um, so, the reason this went by so quickly, of course, is because um, we already have this ability. Um, so, we didn't actually have to write that much code. Most of the code was just in the testing here. Um, and then, you know, I just say I want to use the flip die ability with a few parameters here. Um, and because we already have all that stuff coded, uh, the game can take care of it. So that was uh, the simple one. So let's just run all the tests here. Okay, uh, everything looks good. So we are done that. So I'm just going to commit this here. Um, let's see. Implement 
Wanted Pete Schmidt's special. So um, the ability name that they use, in this case Flip Die, doesn't always match up with the name um, that's written on the card. Um, and that's fine because we kind of separate the presentation, the name of it, from sort of the underlying code. But often the uh, the name of the um, the ability and this do match up just because that happens to be the most useful name for it. So, so commit that. Right. Okay, so the next thing we need to do here is a uh, class take type take ball. And this says when two or less balls are in the pitch count, Pete may give the pitcher one relief to set the wing swing result to one versus any ball pitch. So basically what this means is um, if he only has two, one, or zero uh, balls in the pitch count, he's allowed to just go ahead and take a ball um, if, the, um, if the pitcher throws a ball. So he basically, he sees ahead of time it's not a ball, um, he chooses not to swing, and the pitcher, I guess, feels relieved that he didn't swing or something. Um, so let's see. So for this one, we don't actually have anything uh, created yet that um, sort of matches up with this logic. So I will um, be creating one for that. So the first thing, uh, as before, I will just make a, an ability test. Um, and we'll call this take ball. A new game with Peter Schmid. Okay. Okay, so what the situation we need to happen here is um, that the pitcher um, throws a ball, and Pete is still allowed to roll the die, right? So he's allowed, like, if he already has a one, he doesn't need to use this trait at all. Um, but you know, if if uh, if the pitcher throws a ball and um, you know, let's say a two, I guess, and Pete threw a six, well, you need the the batter needs to roll a number lower than the pitcher in order to get the ball. Um, so he might use this trait in that in that situation. Um, so pitcher throws a ball two. Uh, Pete rolls a six, uses trait to make it a one. Um, okay, so fix dice results. Uh, what? No. Oh. Fix dice. Dice, there we go. Pitch type ball two six so that basically we're we're forcing a die roll to be a certain result uh, in this case because that's the only way the tests are actually useful um, if they actually just rolled random results then we would get failures when we don't want them and all that stuff so um, so let's just make sure we're getting what we actually want let's go to modify swing roll Okay, assert activated. Um, batter controller ability type. Trait. So we make sure that his trait is activated because um, you'll see right here. Trait and and a difference between these is these you actually like choose to use based on the tokens you get. Um, the trait is just always available to you. Um, so you don't need to win any tokens to get that. So let's see here. Let's um, run that. Exception. Yep. 
Oh, right. Um, it thought Pete R. Schmidt was a was a pitcher there um, because uh, that's the first parameter. So that's what was going on there. Cool. Right. So his his traits already activated, even though we haven't defined the code yet because it's always available um, just as part of the game's rules. Um, but you'll see that if we use it, um, uh, the dice is still six. So assert current assert swing roll. So if it worked, it would be a one. Um, but it won't work because we haven't done the code yet. So it's just gonna stay stay on six. Yeah, and then again, I have a warning here, unimplemented usability for a class type tape ball, and that's just to, um, you know, help me out as a programmer so that I have to spend less time figuring out what the problem is if I don't happen to know off the top of my head. All right, so new file, take ball ability controller. Um, so this name needs to match up with uh, the class that we've given it. Um, so it knows what to create and the rest of it. So, um, and we're using Xamarin here, and uh, it hasn't worked very well with our templates. So um, I usually just do something like this: copy, uh, copy paste an existing one, um, and then hollow it out. Okay. And then uh, I'll write sort of a, a general thing of what this uh, does. So when oh, I can copy it from the from here. There we go. Don't need that. Two or less balls in the pitch pound. Um, and then I change these things to be more general, the batter, because it might not necessarily be used by Pete in all cases. And so you might say, well, like, why aren't, why am I not creating parameters? Like, why uh, in here don't I create parameters for, um, you know, the amount of balls that need to be in the pitch count, or uh, how much relief, or that kind of thing? Um, and that's because this is so far there's no other abilities like this on any of the other cards. So doing all the extra work of making those all variables. Um, might not ever be used. Um, so it would just be wasted time and effort. Like there's literally no point if it's not going to be used again. Um, so we'll make it like this for now. And if in the future, um, you know, there's another card that comes out that is very similar, um, we can make this a little bit more dynamic. Um, but for now it's fine that it just like has these sort of these fixed values. Um, all right, so the first thing I think I'll do, uh, yeah, so I'll just write here, um, just as kind of proof that it's being called at the right time. Take ball ability, controller usability. Uh, let's see. Um... So this is uh, whether or not uh, it's optional, um, and this one it is. So maybe that's right. Yep. So there it is. Um, take ball ability controller usability. So that's basically like letting me know that it has reached this point in the code, um, which I expected it to. Um, all right. So the first thing is um, it says when two or less balls are in the pitch count. Uh, and also versus any ball pitch. So we don't want this ability to even be usable um, unless those conditions are true. So we have a uh, over, we can uh, override here, can, uh, can be used now. And that's asking, is this ability usable? Like, does it make sense to use this ability? Um, you know, most of the time this will this will return true by default. It'll just assume that there's no restrictions on it. But in this case, there is. So um, let's see. So what? So first, we want to see if there's two or less balls. So if get ball 
get number yeah yeah so we don't even have that uh, in here yet so get number of balls in pitch count uh, is less than or equal to two and um, is pitch die set to value pitch type uh, ball okay turn true otherwise we can't use it um, and this doesn't exist yet so we will create it um, but it should be pretty simple so just go into the base class here because this derives from um, ability controller so we'll just go down here protected uh, bool oops not bool int And then we return the game controllers game uh, the number of balls so that's pretty simple uh, it's just a little helper and the reason I would make a helper rather than just type this even though it's short is if you know we find at some point that we need to do something a little more complicated with the number of balls um, or store it somewhere else or whatever then any code using this would still work but any code using this would not work um, so just writing these little helpers kind of avoids having to change code later uh, in a lot of places if if it happens to change. All right, so can only be used if there are two or less balls in the pitch count and the pitcher uh, is throwing a ball, okay? So, all right, so that means that it can only be used then, um, which it is in this case, uh, both things. Um, so now we actually use the ability, all right. Um, so the first thing that happens is give the pitcher relief. Um, and I don't think this code is in here yet, actually. Um, relief. I'm just gonna check the chat to see if there are any uh, questions here. No, looks like uh, everyone's uh, just kind of putting it on the background or something. Um, all right, so give pitcher relief one. We'll just start with that for now. Um, actually, let's let's skip the relief part since it might be a little bit more work. Um, and just take care of the uh, changing to one for now uh, just to make sure we got that working um, set die value I wonder if I have a set swing now sometimes I make these little uh, helpers and then sometimes I don't depends on yeah I don't need it there so this dot swing die so we're setting the swing die um, to numerical value one uh, doesn't have a pitch type because it's not a, a pitch die we also set the natural so here there's a little box around this so that means um, you know it's a natural value one as opposed to a modified value one and that can um, that can matter for other abilities that are testing um, you know for uh, if something's a natural rule or not so true set die reason setting the swing and then ability source just lets um, basically just attaches this ability object um, to this particular action um, so that the action knows what caused this action to occur um, and sometimes that's useful and sometimes it's not you know, something might say whenever Pete Schmidt um, changes the die value, do blah blah blah. Um, that's not likely in this particular game, but um, or or the UI might want to know um, what made that change. So anyway, we just provide that uh, in piece of information when when we can. All right. So we run the test, and there we go. Uh, Pete Schmidt uses their trade ability. Uh, it gets deactivated be, um, when it's used um, so that they can't just use it over and over. And then uh, the swing die is set to 1. 
and now so that's why our uh, our tests pass um, now okay so that's good. Um, so the other thing is the giving relief. Um, yeah, and that's sort of the big new thing, I guess, for this uh, that we don't already have in here. Or at least that um, I know, like no batter card has given a pitcher, pitcher relief. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that it's most of the time, if like if I'm the batter and I'm using an ability, the ability is for me or for my own sake. Um, but in this case, they're giving, it's for the sake of the pitcher. Um, and currently, uh, at least on the engine side, we don't sort of have a way of separating like, um, I'm giving you an activation. Um, right now, it's just sort of like, whoever happens to be sitting at the computer uh, is in charge of all the activations. Um, so once we start getting into, um, you know, UI and different players and stuff like that, uh, that'll become more developed. But um, for now, it'll just kind of be like um, an activation um, that the pitcher can use. So, um, so let's, yeah, let's, so let's work on this here. Give pitcher one relief. So I guess in order for this to even make sense, we uh, we want the picture to already have some fatigue. Um, so I'll just set the picture fatigue to one and one, um, just for testing purposes. Because um, because otherwise it's kind of hard to tell if they were even given the relief because, um, you know, like uh, they don't. Like, it's not applied. Um, if you're already at zero fatigue, um, giving relief doesn't really do a whole lot. And I'll also set uh, auto use uh, pitcher relief activations to false. Because um, otherwise, the, the, the test will just kind of automatically use them up. Um, but I want to make sure that they're actually on screen. So assert uh, activation. Let's see. Assert. Hold on. Assert. Right, so assert um, picture relief activation. I don't think this one exists either. I didn't see it there. So I will go to the base test and create that. So what I'm doing here is basically just saying, um, sorry, I can't talk, type and talk at the same time very well. Um, so basically, I just want to write write something here that asserts that there is a pitch relief activation uh, when the take ball is used, um, and then uh, this is just saying like, okay look at all the activations that are currently available and look for a pitcher relief activation and just make sure that it's not null basically that one exists at all um, pitcher relief activation which was ex well I wasn't expected that there was none so um, there was expected to be a, be a pitcher Relief ah. activation, but there was not all. Okay, that's good. So this will probably fail. Uh, in fact, I'll be surprised if it doesn't because we haven't coded it yet. Right. So it was expected to be a picture relief activation, but there was not. So this is sort of what we're working on now with this. 
So give pitcher relief uh, one, and then okay. So let's go to the ability controller and create that. This is often how I um, code. By the way, I just write something uh, as if it exists and sort of like what I think will be important for it like what parameters I think and then uh, I make it exist later um, and part of the reason I do that is let's say that I created the function here but forgot to actually use it um, there won't be a compile error but if um, but if I write this and it doesn't exist and then I forget to actually code it there will be a compile error and it'll bring me right to it so it makes it a little more obvious of what needs to be done than the other way around so anyway that's uh, just something I've a habit I've uh, gotten into so void give pitcher relief int amount and then gives the picture of the provided amount of relief. Okay. Um, so I think it's relief. Activate relief. There we go. Amount. Um, so when the picture gets relief, um, they're allowed to actually use the relief and in some situations they're allowed to call in a relief pitcher so somebody to take over for them um, but in this case uh, they're not allowed to do that so I think I can just make that null um, I'm pretty sure I can just make that null and then ability source uh, would be this right so let's see if that works I'm not Totally sure if that's all we need to do. Okay, so we're getting there. Yep. Okay. And then, um, so yeah, so now this it's confirmed that this activation is there. Um, kind of nice if it showed up here though, in the output. Um, so maybe I will add a thing to uh, to do that just because like you know it I mean the test is verifying that it's there but it's it's kind of nice to be able to see like you see it in the output as well um, so relief activation picture there we go um, you're right so this only was giving output if when it actually used the relief um, so I will just console out here. Um, let's see, picture relief activated, and then maybe how much relief they get to use um, with mm, relief to use. And then this this will just kind of like make it obvious in my test that this has happened. So there we go. Pitcher relief activated with one relief to use. And 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 then the swing die is set to one. Now um, you'll notice that it doesn't wait for the pitcher to use their relief before the swing die is set to one. Um, and uh, and that's that's fine because this doesn't affect this at all and unlike sentinels where there could be a whole chain of events where it order does matter um, in this particular game the amount of interactions are finite enough that you can kind of see ahead of time if that could cause an issue um, so we don't really have to worry about that here um, you know if in testing we find some situation where it does um, we can come back to it but as far as we know, it's not going to cause any issues. Right, so um, 
So then in the test, we'll, we'll have the picture uh, use relief um, and apply it to, let's say, the direction. So they won't reply, apply it to um, location. They'll reply it to direction. Um, so before they use it, assert fatigue, uh, it should be 1-1. One, one. And then afterwards, uh, because it reduces their fatigue, it should be 1-0. Okay, uh, let's see what happened. Direction to be to be one. Oh, um, this is two. Oh, right. Okay, so what's happening here um, is we're setting the the pitcher fatigue um, to one and one, um, but they selected their. Um, their ace pitch just sort of randomly and so it ended up being 2-2 um, two, two instead so I guess we should just uh, we should say um, make batter gain double um, okay no that won't work um, I guess we could just have the uh, pitcher use their ace pitch. Um, and then we know that this will be one and one anyway. So that, yeah. So these are occasionally, like, there are these things that, like, you know, these random things that most of the time don't matter. But then at some point you realize it does for your particular that your test. So this is one of those cases. So let's run that. Yeah, so there we go. Um, so you're activated with one relief to use swing die set to one um, and then deactivated was deact this was deactivated because it was used um, so pitcher relief one relief to use one towards location and one towards direction um, this is a bug this isn't supposed something's wrong with the output here <laughs> it's supposed to say zero towards location um, and you know this is correct here um, so there's just it's just an output bug somewhere. Uh, right, just friendly string on the activation. Leave activation. Let's see. Maximum location, really. No, we don't want the maximum. We want the what was actually used. Um, so the, yeah, these were just both wrong. <laughs> Let's see. That should fix it. There we go. All right. Um, so zero towards location and one towards direction. Um, just going to take a second here to look in the chat. I see and hear JM. Good. Um, looks like John's answering most of the questions. I don't program stuff more complicated than Excel or wiki template code, so I don't know enough to know what questions to ask. It's okay, you don't need to ask any questions if you don't want to. It's more like if you had them. Uh, I just want to make sure that I see them. Um, you know, if this makes no sense to you, that's pretty normal. <laughs> it doesn't make <laughs> sense to, I think, most people, uh, you know, unless they're both interested and have spent the time uh, learning this stuff, so. Um, but, you know, if you like hearing people essentially speak gibberish uh, if you don't know anything about it um, then here we go um, I'm not too in your face so all right um, cool so kid over here right so that's good so uh, on the surface it would seem like we're we're done um, so the tricky thing here though is that let's when you're in modify swing roll um, uh, 
you have a continue button um, that you can't really see. Yeah, yeah, so you can see it being deactivated here. Um, so he has both the trait um, and a continue button. And this continue button is if you don't want to use uh, any of the um, abilities or activations that are on screen right now, like you're just done using them. Um, but we don't want this continue button to be on the screen until after the pitcher has used the relief. Because the situation that would come up here is that it's like, you know, I give, I as the batter give the pitcher relief, but before they're, they're able to, you know, finished using it, I click the continue button as the batter and then the activation's gone and they never got to actually use um, their relief. So this is where, um, you know, this is a little different than anything we've had so far in that we need to hide the continue button away temporarily uh, until um, the pitcher has had a chance to um, apply the relief however they wanted to. And uh, but the thing is, is that in order for there to be anything, um, I'm going to have to fix these, I think. Um, pitch tokens. So um, if I just do fix um, ace pitch, um, then basically what we need is the batter to actually get um, to have at least one extra token because this continue disappears as soon as they have no abilities left anyway. Um, so we don't want that to happen because otherwise that kind of conflicts with our tests. Um, but we do want the pitcher to still have their ace pitch um, for the sake of this fatigue testing. So let's um, first pitcher. I thought it was there. Hmm? Kiddo, hero. Yeah. So it already is that by default, but I just want to make it explicit because uh, in case it changes. Um, so low um, location, low direction uh, away. Okay, so that'll give the pitcher their ace pitch. And then, let's see, location, low. So the batter correctly guesses the, um, the uh, location, but then doesn't correctly guess this. So that way they have one, but not both. And uh, our test should still be okay. Cool, and um, and this way it doesn't auto deactivate our continue because there's still something left that the batter could do, um, and that makes it so that hiding temporarily hiding the continue button uh, is a little more useful. So in our test, um, so we use the trade ability. Um, the swing die should be one the pitch relief activation should be on screen and assert no continue. Let's see, assert, yeah, continue not activated. So I'll have to make that exist. Um, let's copy this here. So basically, um, uh, it'll make sure that, yeah. right, so okay, yeah, so this is what we need to change here. So that continue activation, um, and I guess I should have better output than that, expected to be no continue activation, but there was one. Um, just because that's that makes a little more sense than expected null, but was continue activation. There we go. 
Um, cool. So let's see here. So what we'll actually do. Um, so probably the best thing to do would be for it to automatically know that if I'm the batter and I give something to the pitcher, um, then uh, it should just know, well, I can't give a continue activation to the batter because then they would allow it would cause the game to continue without the pitcher getting their thing. Um, but again, we don't yet have this concept of different players in the game yet. That's sort of the next big thing we're going to work on. Um, so for now, I think I'll just uh, manually deactivate the continue in here because this is the only thing that does that, does this at this point. Um, so it's kind of easy to track it down and change it later. So I'll just manually uh, close that off. Uh, first and then make sure that that's doing the thing yep so it's been de manually deactivated but then the thing is is after the pitcher uses their relief uh, it has to come back because um, otherwise then the batter is not allowed to skip using their remaining abilities it just forces them to have to use it um, and again we might we'll probably change this to be a little more automatic when we have players um, but for now, I think this is um, a reasonable compromise. So, um, yeah, so cert continue not activated. They used their pitcher relief. Um, their fatigue went down. And now the continue should be back again. Um, so this is going to fail because we haven't done that part yet. Okay. Um, right, so... What we want to do is watch for when they use their um, watch for when this activation has been used. So if activation is picture relief activation and activation activation dot ability source is this because um, this is this is the ability that's causing this picture relief activation to even exist. Um, so, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we're only running this after this happens and not all every, after every pitcher relief activation. Um, so basically, uh, return continue button if applicable, um, after the relief has been used and I guess I should uh, put a little comment above this one deactivate deactivate the continue button um, so they can't skip the picture relief yeah All right, um, and then continue, uh, game controller, continue, if applicable. Um, and I, I use, the, so there's two, there's activate continue, uh, and there's activate if applicable, um, but we don't wanna like force it to put a continue if there wasn't even one there in the first place. Um, so we say if applicable, just to make sure it does the checks to make sure it even should be there. Um, so let's try that and see if, yeah. Um, right, so this, let's make sure this is be even being called here. Yeah, it's not. Why is that? So this is one of those parts where I'm not quite sure. Um, what's going on like I would have expected this to be called um, so let's see um, game controller so 
So it's possible it's setting it to be not in effect because it has used um, Right, so I might have to manually do that as well. Let's see. I'm just going to output something here. just get me getting a bit more information making sure that my suspicion is actually accurate um. <clears throat> all right uh, let's see take ball is in effect false right so that it was my suspicion. Um, so set to in effect. Let's see if that helps. Hmm. Let's see. Something is making it not uh, be in effect, uh, even though I manually do it. Um, and so, so there must be something in the logic here that I. Uh, did a while ago that um, made sense at the time. Um, I guess I could just so right. Mm. Let's see. See what it actually the status actually is for that. Um, it's available. Um, right. Okay, so this is actually a little trickier than I thought. My workaround. Um, Yeah, I love Link too. <laughs> um, yeah, it's these little uh, queries like this that make it easy to um, kind of search and select from a collection. Um, it's very convenient and allows you to do things a lot faster than um, you otherwise would have to. Um, Now, what I'm not sure, though, is why the status, if I explicitly say, um, uh, where is it, here, set to in effect, why it would, um, uh, just be available and not in effect. Um, I'm sure there's a good reason that I wrote at some point, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, effect. Oh. Oh, I, oh, okay. All right. Um, I didn't notice this here, um, but there's, there's actually like an ordering thing where it's saying like, 
um, the picture relief was activated with one relief to use and yeah and then this runs so this is just running too soon is the problem um, I, I didn't notice that before so okay so we actually need it to um, to run when when uh, the relief action um, occurs all right so I was just a little confused here There we go. Let's see if that does it. Um, I know I should add the ability source there, but I just want to make sure that this is doing a thing. It's still not. <sighs> the reality of programming sometimes it's like I don't know what's going on um, okay so everything was clear up until this point oh maybe it's because I got rid of that yay okay that's what it was um, so it's just because I got rid of this and then set to not in effect. Yeah. All right. So again, this is just like sort of a, a workaround until we have players. Um, so I'm not too concerned about uh, that part for now. Um, okay, cool. Um, so the continue is back on. Use continue. And cool. All right. That looks good to me. I'm trying to think if there's something I missed here. I feel like I covered everything at this point. So I will commit this code and hand it off to. John, um, I'm not really sure exactly when he'll be on, but he is next up. So if this was exciting to you, um, John's will probably be more exciting because there's more graphics and it's not just black and white text. Um, so stay tuned. And game show won't open to let me close the stream. <laughs> okay, that's not cool. Game show. I'm just going to close game show and it might end the stream. Hello, chat. Trying to click the thing to make it work. And now I have a video of myself. You never know if things are working, right? Until you do. All right. Hey, it's John. All right, I don't need to watch myself on TV anymore. So I can make the chat. All the way chat. Maybe. Chat only. Apply. There we go. All right. So thanks, John Mark, for the uh, engine programming side of things. And uh, I'm going to show some of the view side of the same coin. So Jean-Marc programmed some stuff in Bot9 Engine, 
And so let's pull down his changes. Just push the code. Speaking of notifications, I should put these to do not disturb. Did I do that? On, there we go. All right, so let's see if I got his stuff. That is the stuff, let's make sure. And so I'm gonna go in and rebuild the DLL. So that we have access to all that stuff. All right, so Peachmit, we've got him in our spreadsheet here. In Safari. Uh, so we've got the Iron Grip, and we've got the Relief thing. Okay, take a ball. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go over to Unity. And we'll go into the game view screen. This is some other stuff I was working on that we'll maybe get to today, making some cards on the screen. Not these cards, but on the screen. Like that. Okay, so let's go into the game view, and I'm going to say, go to my configuration here, and have a game with test pitcher and Pete. I think that's how you spell it. We'll find out soon enough. So it's like last time, we'll run the game, and the first thing is to make sure his abilities show up. Uh, and they do. We have Iron Grip and uh, a trait, so that's good. And you can see a few visual improvements that have happened since last time. Um, as we continue to improve the game, uh, you'll be seeing those things. They have hats now. It's very exciting. Uh, okay. So, oh, Leo loves the hats. <laughs> Can't get enough of those hats. Well, let's just go back here. Uh, so, uh, so let's look at the iron grip first. So, like before, what's going to happen most likely is when we uh, well, let's fix the dice here so that uh, we get a one, two, or three. So, strike two. And the batter rolls a one as we suggested. Cool. So continue that. So you see we have an error here, no ability view found uh, for that ability. So let's make it. Uh, and that's the all right, there's the take oh I think I think we actually have two abilities happening there. Let's see. Oh, I see. So Iron Grip is actually just like using a flip die ability that we already have done before. Uh, but interestingly, we don't handle showing what name of it is. Uh, if we click it, it'll probably do that. That's good. Uh, let's just make sure that button actually shows uh, what it should. So let's get to that script. It is going to be an ability view for flip die. other windows for now. We'll get to those later. Uh, I believe the first meeples were in Carcassonne, uh, as far as I know. They are the meeple, unless, you know, I'm sure there might have been a pre-meeple, but they are certainly the most earliest famous game that has meeples, um, and may have invented the meeple. Uh, cool. Oh, I see. So here we actually 
the only flip die that we've dealt with before is a, uh, a pitch die, so we don't actually handle that case at all. So uh, the other kind of dice we have are numeric dice, and I think we can say yes, ask if it is numerical, so we'll do that. Just to be sure, in case there's some other sort of die that appears in the future. Who knows with these crazy Daryls. Uh, can we ask for that? How about numerical die? No. Is it? What's the property? Control die, swing die. I guess we have to. I don't know why we have to like. Pick one of these. All right. Uh, basically, um, we're just going to get the flip value. Value. Uh, we know it's a numerical die, so. Take that. Uh, so then, and that's going to be an int question mark, which means a nullable int, which can not have a value. Uh, and so we'll say flip text is the flip value to a string. And then it should say flip to the number. I'm, has someone not gone and found out the history, full history of meeples for us? Uh, here we go, flip to six. That is what we want. Cool. Uh, so that's that, but then we also have the other ability is not implemented. So uh, let's take a look at that. That's the take ball. So we're going to want to create an ability view for that. What is his ability? Right, it's a little more complicated. Uh, so the MVP is pretty simple, flip. We've already done that before and we just had to fix that label. Now, the trait is complicated as Jean-Marc was talking about where there's this extra ability and stuff like that. I think the UI for it's gonna be fit, pretty simple, just like a button that says take a ball. But we'll see what happens in terms of interaction after we uh, at that button. So it's going to be, again, just another simple ability view. Uh, we'll put it in the right namespace. I wish Unity actually let you do that, but it doesn't. All right, so we set that up. Let's set it up in the factory while we're here. It's not really a factory I was thinking about, but uh, we had a previous class like this and we called it a factory and it was not a factory, but it's just sort of stuck. It could be a factory, like it could build things, but it's, it just sort of returns a thing that exists already. Take ball. We actually have another one called take pitch, which isn't ball specific. It's a different. That one can result in strikes. Uh, okay. So that's there, and let's go into the game view and add that. We have a meeple on Wiktionary. Yep, tell me about it. I can't focus on my iPad as well, so. Uh, take ball ability view. And we're just gonna have a simple button here, but as I mentioned last time, uh, you know, we're going to have nice, cool buttons that are different for everyone, but for now, just to get it to work, we have a simple, simple view, and that everything sort of looks the same right now, and that's all right. Did a question about Hero's ability get ever, ever get answered? I'm not sure. Jean-Marc might be able to jump in on that. Um, all right, so... Where is 
Ability is not usable. Oh yeah. Two or less balls are in the, in the pitch count. There are two or less balls in the pitch count. Oh, but it's not a, uh, it's not a ball. So it just, uh, for some reason it, it shows up, but it's not usable. So uh, we don't actually put the button there. So let's uh, start over and uh, uh, make a ball. And we'll not continue the game. It's a beautiful day. I was thinking of doing programming on the balcony, but um, I don't have a chair or a table out there. So we need to figure that out first. Uh, yeah, the question about was whether you could randomly choose a pitch. Uh, could the batter be up, like, do they still get the fatigue pitch for free, or do they could they potentially choose it incorrectly? And I don't think we ended up, we never got to deal with that yet. Uh, all right, so we're going to see if this trade kicks in. And actually, having that roll of one is not going to be productive in terms of seeing if it works. All right, so we have our button to take a ball. And so if we do it, the pitcher is supposed to get one relief, and we set the swing result to one. All right, so that happened. And now what's happening? So I'm just looking at the log here. Okay, we got a pitcher relief activation, but is it just thinking that, oh, I see. I think what's happening is, uh, so we, we have a system in here where the, the view knows whether you can activate if you can show buttons for more than one thing at a time. Uh, and what it's doing right here is saying, oh, like that needs to wait until we finish doing other stuff. Um, and so I'm I'm, I assume if I like click a bunch of stuff here, we'll actually get to it just to see that's what's happening. Yeah, so now it goes to the fatigue track thing. Um, so what we wanna do is have the picture immediately um, be the one or get to do the fatigue track thing. Uh, I'm not sure if we talked about whether like the batter gets to do their other modifiers first or something, but you generally wouldn't because uh, it's a pitcher's, pitcher's thing. So uh, let's go into here and say that we're allowed to do that. So that I think is in the ability or it's in the activation factory is where that. Is, is where we have a little bit of logic here that says, can we activate simultaneously? And what, there we go. So you're curious what it has here already, if it's the same, you know, uh, the same one can activate simultaneously with itself, just in case. Uh, both ability, regular ability activations can be presented simultaneously, uh, as well as continue uh, and rolling dice. So I think we're just going to add another case and say um, that uh, pitcher relief ones are allowed, or at least for now. Okay. Um, I might have to do it also between continue activation, but we'll see. Let's see if that does the trick for us. I think the continue goes away, so it's actually not there. At least that's what I heard when I was listening to Jean-Marc. So, uh, so yeah, let's throw a pitch. 
Let me get a ball. And right, so we can take a ball. Right, and now uh, the pitcher has to do fatigue. Uh, we can see if, I don't know if we care whether the batter can do other things at the same time. I don't think it actually matters. So um, once the pitcher confirms, then the batter can keep the dice. So that's a little awkward, but we'll see what we can probably figure that out a little better. Uh, cool. And that worked. The pitcher got their relief. And all right. Well, that was easy. I think that was the easiest player to implement this that we had. Generally, the later ones have been easier because they, you know, they have similar abilities to other characters, and so uh, there isn't a lot new to do. Um, so I think I'm okay with how that turned out right now. Uh, I'm gonna go to I have another file where I have the ones that are finished, and we can let them be selected. So. I'll Make Peach Peter Schmidt be available in there. And let's go to our Git repo. Uh, we have our updated DLL, my debug settings, game view for that stuff. Why did it say flip to four on a one? That's a good question. Four is not the opposite of one on a die. Let's go have a look. I think it was a three. Oh, you know, actually, you know what? That is not updating. That's a good catch. So, uh, so the reason here's what's going on. So when we roll the dice, uh, it's a three. So the other side is four. But if we re-roll it, or we do the take ball set the swing result to one, that should update. Um, I don't know if there's anything coming from the engine. It, it's more of a view thing, right? Showing what that is. It should see what's happened to the die and like update that button. Um, so that's almost, I mean, if I click it, it'll go to, let me just make sure if I click it, it does the right thing. I'm sure it will. Uh, it's just that the button text hasn't been updated. Try that again. Uh, since when we, you know, when we click the button, oh, I'll do this. We we'll could take the fatigue. So uh, that's just a label that says flip to four. What when you click that button, what it does is it says, "All right, game engine, flip that die." Uh, and so the game engine knows that this is a one, and so it's going to uh, do that. Uh, it flips, uh, I think his ability flips whatever the die value is, not just the natural roll. Yeah, if you, if you roll the one, two, or three, uh, you may flip the swing die. So, uh, and those are natural, but, uh, the ability sets it to a natural one. So, it becomes as if you rolled it. So when I flip this, it's actually going to flip to six. Yeah, because that's how programming works. It's just a display issue. So uh, I don't know. If, oh, I don't know if I want to bother fixing that right now. Um, I can add a card here that says. Then yeah, this is this is going to affect other flip things too. So uh, if natural die values changed, update flip button label. I don't know, you, there's no reason why you would want to do that generally, but you know, it's a, it's player's choice. So uh, let's go back to my commit here. So I added that uh, in the flip die ability, I added a way to show that string where that new file and um, yeah, we let those happen simultaneously, which I think is okay. All right, so support. Pete Ash mid.
Cool. All right, so we still have that bug, but uh, you know, that is something we can look at later if we want. I'm, I don't think that'll be super interesting to look at, so. Uh, and I want to check beat off on this list too. Boop. All right, so uh, next thing I was thinking of doing is looking at rendering some cards. That's a little more of a visual thing. We actually haven't done any card rendering in the game yet. So besides uh, what you see on the screen, there's sort of the partial, the ability stuff uh, that you see on the card here. Um, we've, we've got a control for that, that we sort of bring in the game during gameplay because you don't actually need to see the whole card um, generally. Uh, there's not really a whole much that's more super important um, for when you're making this decision. So, uh, so but we do want to be able to show the actual cards in the game. So uh, let's go ahead and look at that. So I started, I got some of the groundwork done on this uh, making a scene where we can uh, create a card uh, at runtime. So I can go in here and type in uh, an identifier, and that's a card. It has a label with a name. Done. Probably a few more things to do. Uh, I'm not gonna. It's not gonna end up looking like this today because we don't have all the graphics separated out. But uh, we're going to at least get it to a point where. Uh, Jennifer can come and make it look good. So, uh, so one thing when I'm looking at doing something like this is I look at the card or you know a PDF file or whatever uh, of the card and identify all the different things that are going to have to be dynamic about it. Uh, so it's actually most of it on the front side because we've got um, we've got the main image that's just going to be a sprite. There's actually a border which is going to be colored. So that's another sprite that's going to have to be colored. Uh, there's a logo for the team. There's a label for the title of the card, the position, and the team name. Those are all things on the front of the card. And actually, rookie cards also have an extra little thing. I mean, there's Sentinels cards that have, like, extra bits and stuff, but we're not going to worry about those right now. So that's the front of the card. Then the back of the card has a lot more information, but there's actually a bunch of stuff on the back of the card that isn't anything that the you know programming needs to worry about, uh, there's like, well, maybe there's not a lot, but there's these little stars. These little stars are on every card, so basically. And actually, I think there's a card that they're not on, so that might not be true, but let's pretend it's true. So we'll do the front of the card here, and uh, so I've got uh, my Unity UI stuff set up in here, and I'm making a prefab, uh, making an object here, that I can then, uh, it can be saved as an asset and you can instantiate it uh, in the code. Uh, and so um, let's do that. So I haven't like laid out the aspect ratio properly and like that, but let's uh, sort of sketch it out. This is sort of what you do. You get, get it working and get it uh, roughed in with the right sort of programming controls you need. Uh, and then uh, someone can come in and make it look cool. So we already have a title label here. Uh, we're also going to need a label for, let's move this up a little bit, a label for the position. So let's put that, and that is, we'll move it down a little bit. It's a little smaller. We're not actually using Arial, but that's fine. A little smaller, maybe not that small. It's centered. And we'll say that. Uh, we'll make this bold. It looks a little nicer. And we'll actually that's centered too. It's centered in the space where it is, so we may as well do that too. Okay, and then we also have a label which is the team name label, and that is going to be. Um, even further below. And that's not going to be italicized, that's just normal. And towards the bottom. Sure. Okay. So 
those are some labels. Uh, and instead of saving the scene, we actually want to apply this to the prefab. Uh, since I've already made it a prefab over here, uh, when I apply it, then those things uh, get put into the prefab instead of just being changes in the scene. If you're not familiar with Unity, with your, when you bring a prefab in, you can actually like, instantiate just by dragging and dropping. I get another instance of that. I can make changes of this that are just in the scene by saving the scene. I can be like, you know, this label is blank in the scene. We'll hide that one. Uh, and then I can save the scene, but that doesn't have to change the prefab. I have to apply the changes back to the prefab. Anyways, that's little things. So uh, actually, I already have a script that I set up to hook up some of these things. So I have a position label I want to hook up there, and the team name label. Uh, what? OK, it just didn't drag and drop for me right there. So uh, we also have this, we can put in this sort of bright background. We actually, the, it's bright white, the whole card, so we can, uh, we can do that. We can just say it's white. Blah. And this, Im this source image here is like a Unity default image. I'm just going to erase it so we just get uh, blank white and not that weird sort of semi-transparent thing. You can see the background image is like that Unity sort of as a default set of sprites. Uh, but let's create a an image for that background color, like the border, I guess. Uh, we'll call it the border image, I guess. And uh, we can make it some color that will show up here. Sort of like, I don't want to make it just like lizard loops because I don't know if it worked. Let's make it this. Oh, that's gross. What color? I do love, I love the, the crayon box, but they're not all pretty. All right, lavender. So, I mean, on the card, this is like, you can see there's a thin blue border. And like on the other cards, you can see there's a thin border around. So this is not gonna be this image because it's actually got like a rounded corner and stuff, uh, but Jennifer will sort that out. Uh, and actually what I'm gonna do is set up the anchors here too, uh, to fit it in exactly. And then say it's say like 20 away from each. We'll adjust these proportions as we finalize it, but it's nice to set up your anchors to be something that makes sense. So then when you grow and shrink things, they actually work together. So now you're like, why is that covering everything? Because Unity UI, the depth of your stuff all has to do with the hierarchy in Unity. So if I move it above that, or above that, so it all has to do with the order that it is in the inspector, which is makes sense. It can be a little weird, but it makes sense. In NGUI, which we did Sentinels in, you have to like have a Z value for every everything, which is more controllable, I think, in code, but it's also can be a big pain in the butt. So let's just move this label up a little bit, and that one up a little bit, and that one up a little bit. Layers, exactly. Actually, NGUI has panels and widgets, and they each have their own, it's like a sort of hierarchical Z order thing. It's powerful, but I don't know. Uh, you also can like override the Z order of things in uh, <laughs> in your UI with uh, tricks. And I, I, it might be this Z position thing, you can just be like, it's in front, maybe. I don't know what that does, actually. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have that border image, all right, and we're gonna, let's just make like a blank image for where the team logo is gonna go, down in the corner, sort of, and we'll make an image for the actual player, and I'm sure there's going to be like a mask and stuff that Denver will make to make like the nice cutout and stuff. But let's just do like this. And that is too white, so I'm just going to make it like a gray. All right, so we'll call this the team image. 
and the player image. And yeah, those don't super overlap at the moment, so I'm gonna hook those up, though we're not gonna actually, well, we can probably find a graphic to put in there. Uh, team logo image, come on. And we can have a, yeah, well, we'll do the rookie one later. Oh, we may, I guess we may as well do it. We'll put the rookie thing in for the rookies. We'll make another image. I think that's just going to be a sprite since it always says the same thing. And it just sort of comes over here as a little flag. Do we have anything that we can put in? Hey, there's pictures. They're like, they don't really fit well, but put the icon in there. Yeah, looks great. Uh, okay, so we'll call this the rookie image. I make things look great. I'm not responsible for making things look great. I do okay. Uh, okay, so that's basically the card, right? Looks good. So let's uh, apply the prefab here. And run it and see what happens. Actually, there's one thing I want to do here, which, yeah, okay. All right, so we get that card. You know, it's its own instance and um, we haven't filled in the other stuff yet, so why don't we do that? Uh, okay, so let's go over to the code. And I think actually, yeah, okay, close others. So uh, I've got some scripts here. So the card tester view controller is pretty simple. Uh, this actually isn't like, Right now, this is instantiating the prefab. I'm actually gonna have a factory that does that, but for since I'm just starting this, I just decided to throw this in here. Um, I am actually going to, yeah. Well, I'm only working on one card here, so maybe I'll just uh, set the value of this thing to be Leslie Lou. And then I don't have to type it in every time. Maybe I still have to type it in every time. All right, I'll do this. Uh, at the start, I'm going to set the input field text to player press get string card tester identifier. So this is just gonna let me have it remember what I typed in uh, every time. And so I can have it remember by just going in here and saying that we're going to set it to um, that text. Player press is just a really simple references thing for Unity. Key value store. So then can type Leslie Lou, good. And when I run it again, Leslie Lou is there. The card isn't there, we can fix that. Uh, right, let's go back here and we'll say, uh, if we actually have something, we can uh, create a card. And that will, just to simplify uh, iterating, it saves us time typing in something every time and hitting enter. It's the do less method. All right, so we've got a few things we need to do here. We need to color the background. We need to uh, fill in these labels and we can probably get an image in there. I think we can get an image in there, maybe. Something. It won't look great, but it will work. 
So uh, in the card view uh, class uh, is where we have all these connections. We're actually going to need a new. Actually, I I used a mechanism that I liked before, which was a. Uh, so I didn't finish my sentence. I was going to add something to. to have a property to connect to that blue thing so we can color blue. There's actually more things on here that take on the color. Like that label takes on the color. You can see in all the different cards, many bird heads is red, uh, and that's red, and you know there might be more than one sprite that goes to do that. So um, so instead of just you know having this know about each of the things that need to be colored, we can uh, have like a list of things that need to be colored. So we can, um, and I think, what's the, where did we do that in the other, we did that in the, in the other thing, the active player panel. Right. No. Yes. Was it? Oh, the summary panel, card summary panel. All right, so half of programming is finding out the last time, the place that you did that thing that made sense and uh, doing it again. So uh, we have, so here if you go, if we go back to the game view, I can show you what I'm talking about here. So in the game view scene, sure I'll save. We actually dynamically color a bunch of stuff down here in the bottom um, based on the team color uh, all that red color that's in there is coming in dynamically, um, and so this is using that that mechanism. So I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to go to my card view and add uh, an array here of graphics. Graphics is like this super class of image and text, so it can have multiple things, uh, and so uh, we'll be able to hook that up. I think that's the last thing I need to hook up. Um, for the sprites, we'll get to that after we do those things. So here in this configure method, this is being called when we're creating the card, uh, the card view, that is. So the card, that's something kind of important. The, as far as like the program is concerned, the card is like an engine thing, right? It's a, it's a, this is a physical card, but in the, in the video game, a card is like a, a class with data. Like it's not... Uh, it doesn't have any graphics to it. So this is a card view, which is um, a way to look at the card. Um, and so, but like, you know, when Jean-Marc is doing his stuff, you know, his kind of idea of a card view is going to be more of like a string representation, like a, like a you output it and you can read all the information. Uh, that's just another view. It's the same sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, maybe... I don't know, there could be some other view that we use, like, uh, actually a good example is in Sentinels, um, we have card, we have views of the same card that look totally different, right? There's the small card views uh, that are uh, simplified, and then the large card views, um, and so on. So, uh, okay, so we need to fill in a couple of these labels. So we've got the position label. Uh, and actually, yeah, so I started, I started trying to sort of make this a little feature proof by saying like, you know, because there's also support cards. So uh, so if uh, definition is a player card definition, then, you know, we can do player stuff like positions. But support cards don't have positions. They you just dig in, I have some in the box here somewhere. Oh, I didn't put these in the box. Anyways, trust me on that. They don't have positions. Or maybe they do, and we'll fix that. Uh, so here we want to cast this. Uh, so in C Sharp, you can ask like whether some whether uh, a variable is an instance of some class. And so if it is, then you can uh, say that it is. Uh, some people like to use using or whatever, but I don't use that a lot but I'm probably terrible. I just make a variable. You could do like using player definition as player card definition to have a little block and then only used inside that. 
That's probably smart, but I'm just not used to doing it. Uh, so we want to set the position label text to the position. But that's not like a string that we can really use. It's actually an enumeration. Um, and we can click on Explore here. So it's, you know, it has stuff, but it's not like a human readable thing. Uh, so in the card summary panel, we actually have a uh, dictionary. We have a dictionary that uh, uses, uh, that has a, uh, human readable names for, for those things here in the game constants. So uh, that's just a nice little, nice little touch. Then we'll just do that. Uh, player definition. All right, so that's popular and position label. Then we have the team label. Uh, I don't know if do other things have teams. Definition dot team. It does. Okay. Uh, so we can say team name label dot text definition dot team identifier. But once again, this is like. Uh, it's not a human readable. It's not a human readable stream. Obviously, it's readable, but it'll be like for less a little bit capital senators, you know, all together without a space because it's something we can. We want to make sure it's something we can use like as a class name or a variable name or whatever we want. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for on my desk where we have the team name somewhere, and I think we have them somewhere, but we might not. No, we have the colors, but we don't have the teams. All right, we're just going to put the identifier in for now, um, and we'll put a to-do here. To-do, uh, look up the team name. It's dead. Uh, we can definitely say that uh, it's in uppercase, because that's what's on the card. It's in uppercase. And all right, so that should populate our text. No one's saying anything. Hopefully you're either really enraptured or maybe no one's watching anymore. <laughs> it does say zero viewers on my thing. I should make sure OBS is working. No one has texted me. It's still streaming. I don't know. Just gonna say anybody out there? <laughs> okay. Uh, in any case, it's for the historical records. So, oh, I'm in the game view. It's not on B. Other people are distracted by work. Okay, it's just the the Twitch app is saying zero viewers, so it's a nest of lies. Uh, all right, so we have uh, Les Lou picture, and that actually gets capitalized too, and capital senators. Jean Marc is here for me. Okay, good. So actually, we want that to go to upper as well. And I should, probably, I should probably call this two upper invariant variant because the other thing complains to me about, I don't know, there's always a warning about culture stuff, which is like, we have a pretty limited number, like limited set of things, so. Uh, all right, so we got that, those labels. We wanna hide that rookie image for non-rookies, so let's do that. Uh, I think rookie, going to be in player card definition. Rookie image. And we'll just set it active or not, whether it's a rookie. And I don't want to go to OPS. That's not where I want. Just take me where I want to be. Oh, there's 10 viewers. All right, I feel better. Zero viewers. 
it's definitely like pretty sad. All right, so we don't have a rookie image, that's good. Uh, we still, we don't actually have any image for that team, I don't think, in the game right now. But we do have some images in, of the players, they're just not like, so this is something that is kind of interesting. So uh, we've got uh, images of the different cards, um, but these are, these are cropped uh, and small. They're only 256 by 256. Uh, size images. Uh, and these are for like the little icons of of the characters. And so they're not suitable for, you know, full, bringing up full screen on your phone, but uh, we'll, we'll use them right now um, just to uh, illustrate that it's working. Uh, and so here you can see actually an example of these identifiers, similar to team identifiers, cards of identifiers, where, you know, there's no um, spaces and or special characters or stuff. Uh, and we do it that way so we can use reflection and have class names and stuff uh, and other and file names which makes more sense and stuff like that. Uh, if you have to deal with spaces in your file names it can be a pain in the butt. Okay so let's get that picture. So let me see I think I might have to hook up some more things here. Now let's make that active. So right actually the team color graphics we can do that uh, because there's actually two. There's the border image and the title label are both supposed to be colored based on the team. And I'm going to add another sprite in there for that, like there's like that white background, right? So I'm going to do that for now to uh, sort of be the backdrop of the, of that. What? Wait. What happened there? I don't know what happened there. So I don't want that to be. I want that to be just behind the title label, and sort of like this, and sort of like that. That'll do. Okay. Uh, and we'll call this like title background. Oh, and it's actually below the position label too. So, good. I mean, this is not going to look pretty. It'll do. Oh, and I guess that wants to be a little down. Oh, that was just right. Okay. That, yeah, look at that. Perfect. Uh, and actually, since that's sort of, we could put these inside the title background area, but I'm not sure that's how it's actually going to be organized when we do it. So, I'm just going to fit them in to the same area, but not necessarily a child of that, because maybe that's going to be some other sort of setup, depending on how Jennifer decides to organize it. Uh, but that's always going to be white, and then uh, the label will get colored. So what else do we need? Uh, we have the player image and stuff. OK, I think that's, that's it. So let's apply that. We can hide that. And all right, so we run it, we'll see what we just saw, basically. Okay, so let's do the color thing. Uh, if you were watching carefully, you would have seen there's this other thing uh, on the card summary panel, the team color library, and also the headshot sprite library. And so I'm gonna actually get both of those. Uh, these are um, just little, sort of unity assets that can do like a string to an asset uh, and like a dictionary. And so that lets us like associate a team identifier with a color or a card identifier with a graphic or that sort of thing. Um, unity actually does not have really good support for sprite sheets, but that is in like pro there, it's in developer preview right now. So hopefully in the next version, uh, we won't need to use these sort of little workarounds uh, and It'll be a little easier. But let's uh, just do this for now. So uh, we've got these libraries. I'm just going to call this. Uh, this is going to be because we'll have a, we'll have a sprite library for like the front side of the cards, which are these nice colorful ones. And then there's also going to be different images for the back side. Uh, so let's call this um, front player. Library and then we'll we may as well add 
back. Place part of the library. Um, Actually, it's going to be a different prefab for the front and the back, so this can just be the player spread library because there's only one picture, and then it'll just point to a different one. Uh, okay, so da, 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 da. so now um, we can do the coloring. Well, the zoom will hook that up. So, um, and I have an example of doing that over here. So. Uh, Basically, uh, if the colors have uh, that team identifier, uh, we can color those graphics. So I'm just going to copy this. We'll probably refactor this so it's a little like if you if you find yourself copying and pasting code like this, you're probably doing it wrong. So I'm probably doing it wrong, but in the interest of making something happen on the screen, you believe I can fly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this part of this is that, like, um, Unity not having, like, proper sprite support. Like, I, I should be able to say, like, you know, this dot whatever image dot sprite name equals the identifier. Like, the end. Like, not have anything like that. So, we could add another component to help do that, but I kind of want to just wait until Unity has their thing and use that. Um, but we'll see. All right, so if we have that sprite, then we will use the player image and do this. All right, remember, don't do what I'm doing. Uh, and we'll keep these warnings in because that's handy. All right, and now we have the team identifier, and the team identifier is just straight up the definition. All right, and okay, so that that's all doing that, and we'll say like to do better sprite handling, yo. Okay. So if we run this right now, it's not going to work because we haven't populated those things. Uh, so let's wait for it to compile, and we can do that. So we have, we're just going to, so right now we're going to use this headshot sprite library. It's going to look terrible and stretched, but it will have the right graphic for the right player, which is the idea. And the team color library as well. And we'll, that doesn't actually change how it looks. And I think let's apply that and save. Hey look, it's Leslie Lou. I mean, zoomed in. And we have the color all happening, and the labels are populated, mostly. And, oh, I guess that label's supposed to be white. And uh, we don't have a graph, we don't have any graphics for the teams in here right now, so I don't think it matters to even try that. We're close enough on that. Uh, cool. All right, so let's just let's fix that uh, fix that label to be the right color. And the picture, the position label should be black, I think, not dark, not very dark gray. And yeah. All right. So that is. Uh, the front side prefab, I think we've got it. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, I mean, still, it's the it's it's the programmery level of interface there. Uh, it's got everything it needs, and then you know uh, we can come in and replace the graphics with the ones that make sense uh, and stuff like that. And you might be like, well, okay, that's Leslie Liu. What about King Lanius? Does he work? Nope. Did I spell it wrong? Uh, he doesn't have a team identifier. I think. Let's try someone else. How about Wake Louder? Okay, come on. Let me do it. Let 
wake up louder. Hey! All right, King Lanius, either I typed it in wrong or he doesn't have team. I'm gonna investigate here. He has a team, maybe I misspelled him. Oh, I know what I did. So I took a shortcut and I'm only creating pitchers, not batters. This is something the factory will need to deal with better. So it's only uh, creating it with pitcher cards. So this is gross, but I'm just going to do this and do King Lanius. We don't have a way to just create a card from the identifier. We have to pass the type as well. So, so I should be able to put in King Lanius. Yeah, as a batter, he works. Okay, it's a little stretched out, but he's okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna save that because I feel pretty pleased with myself. Save project, you always have to make sure to do that in Unity because that's how you make sure your prefabs and stuff are actually saved. Uh, all right, so Guess what? So here's one thing that's interesting. You notice like I was making changes in the scene stuff, but since I was applying those changes to the prefab, that actually the scene itself doesn't change. Um, it's just the prefab that it's referencing. So I'm going to, I have that player card front is has a lot new to it, and the card view and the card tester has some improvements, right? So let's just call this, uh, Initial work on card view front. So that's cool. And I mean, we'll use we'll be using these the front side of the cards in the game in various places. Probably more of the like choosing a player sort of uh, aspects of the game where you're create, building your team. And you want to like pick from the headshots and then zoom into them. So, um, but the back side of the cards where all the good stuff is like gameplay nuggets. So why don't we? make another prefab for the back. And we could cheat and just copy this one, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna duplicate that, and I'm gonna call it player card back, and I'm gonna change it. That's another half of programming, is just taking something I already have and changing it. All right, so and that's right now still connected to that other prefab, but I'm going to connect it I'm going to drag it again here, and then we'll have another prefab. Uh, and so, and then the card tester, right now, you know, we're gonna have a way to uh, create multiple different kinds of card views, but we'll just do this. So one of the interesting things about bottom of the ninth that is different from Sentinels is that the orientation of the cards are different on each side. Uh, and so, we're actually, you know, they're this way up on this side, but this way up on the back side. Whereas Sentinel's cards, which I don't have with me, they're over there somewhere. Uh, they're always this way up. Except, well, uh, Vengeance style cards are big cards that are sideways, but you never have to worry about that in Sentinel's, but we'll have to worry about it. So, but for now, I'm just gonna make it, whoa, see those anchors aren't set up right, but that's fine. What was that? What is that big, big thing? Oh, that's the player image. Okay, well. So in this one, we actually don't have a border image. I can delete that. I can command delete it. Come on, do what I want. Yeah, so that actually breaks prefab instance, but you can still apply and overwrite it. Uh, all right, so we have uh, what's this one? The title background area, we're not going to need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, title label. Oh, they're all down here. Okay, so we have a title label up here, and it's actually using like that. They always have this, like on the back side, it's like this two tone printing. So it's actually, the colors are always going to be basically the same. Uh, oh, I, I didn't notice that the, the name is uppercased on the front side too. Uh, it's always uppercased. 
Um, so we have a title label, and that's actually the left aligned on this one. And we have a position label, and that's left aligned and not, oh, it is italicized. And uh, we don't have a team name label, so we can delete that. There's actually no team stuff on the back, except like that might be in their picture. So that's interesting. Uh, we've got, a, and then we've got some new things as well. So the player image actually is like more over here. Sure. Actually, this is a little too. Just like put my card up on the screen, get the right aspect ratio. <laughs> we'll sort that out. Come on. Click on that thing and let me. Why is it? Why is it like that? Why do you gotta be like that? What? I think something got screwed up in. Yeah, something got flipped. All right. This is annoying. What? All right. It's doing the thing where it's like <laughs> backwards. Uh, all right, zero, 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 zero. Why is it, does it not have any drawing anymore? What is even happening? What is in front? What is this big gray area? <laughs> okay, something weird is happening. All right, now, I can make this be more of an appropriate size. Sure, that looks good. Uh, funny, okay. This can go up here. And as I said, this is all sort of still really rough early stages, so don't worry about it looking awesome yet. It's Jean Marc's fault. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. We don't need a team image. See, everything started breaking when I started deleting things. I feel don't feel good about that. We actually do have a little rookie image that is on these. Where are the rookies? They have a little like banner up in the corner. Um. So we can. Continue to have that, probably. It'll just be like, like that. All right, but then we have some other things on here that aren't on the front of the card. So we have alternative facts. There are, um, actually the position label has more to it. So that's something that's a little different. There's a number, and actually that, there's a baseball there, but it's not always a baseball. So. In some cards, it's like an Omnitron logo or other things. So I think in the first edition, in the base game, it's always a baseball, but we'll probably make it so we can change it. Uh, so we're going to need a, an image for that. And I think I called it the card numbered image. I already cheated and made it. Yeah, card numbered image. And we're just gonna, we're gonna make, actually the background isn't white on the back. It's a texture, but I don't know if we have, we might actually have a texture in here for that. Textured box. Mm. I'm sure we have more things that work better and Jennifer will make nice things, but. I guess we can use that. That looks basically like what it does. Uh, but we'll have something that's more, because there's no actual border on the cards. Uh, and then we'll take this card number image and put it up in the corner. And we're going to actually add the label inside of it because uh, it goes with it. 
and that's card number label. And it's really tiny. Where here we'll just make it fit into its parent and center, center. The text is just gonna be like a number. So we'll put like 99, say. And it's got that purple color, purple, whatever. This color I have in my palette because we use a lot. And so that image is gonna be a baseball or something, but I don't think we have it right now. And let's see, we also have the star things. I'm not gonna worry about the star things. Uh, we have an ability box and we have a trait and we have fun fact stuff. Uh, so let's make, let's do them left to right here. We'll make the fun fact. There's actually a little image with this little pit. I don't know what I'm doing when I click that. I think I'm moving the like pivot. Yeah, or something. Uh, there's this little guy down here. He's, so when it's a pitcher, he's a little pitcher guy. And when it's a batter, he's a little batter guy. And Mr. Chomps is probably something else. Make your own baseball team handle a bat. I like it. Uh, so we also have a little a label for the fun fact down there um, that I'm going to put. My proportions are definitely wrong here, but uh, we'll deal with that later. This is the fun fact label, and that was the fun fact image for those keeping score at home. The fun fact label is going to be about yay big, and yeah, that's not right at all. I'm just going to make it thinner. And it has that color. And we will say, this is a fun fact, such fun. And we can actually do the bold thing. Fun fact, this is a fun fact. And we can actually check this. I guess they all have a sort of small font size. That's, I'm sure we'll deal with overflow and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to apply the prefab since I've been doing a bunch of work and make sure it's saved. Okay, so that's coming along. So the main thing we don't have here is the ability box and the trait. So I'm going to add the trait label in. Because it's actually sort of unstyled, like it doesn't have a box or anything on the card. It's just sort of out there by itself. Sort of with the box, but it's funny, there are cards where it's like weird. So maybe actually I'll leave it for a second. So the ability box that we see on the other thing is its own prefab. And Unity doesn't really have nested prefabs, so I'm just gonna bring this in and it won't be a it won't be a prefab. I don't think. Well, it says it is, but if I apply this, I think that link goes away. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, oh, wait, this is an ability box. That's not, that's an ability. That's not the, for the whole bunch of abilities. Let's go to the other scene and see what it is. Game view. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, where's my canvas here? So on the active players panel, we have a batter abilities panel and a picture abilities panel. Right, so these are actually, uh, okay. So it actually, it's just an empty area that it fills in. So uh, we don't need to worry too much about it. So actually I'm just gonna go and copy one of those and put it in. This is all work I did a few weeks ago and I don't remember it all. 
How much extra work would Sentinels of the Ninth actually be, says Darren2500? Well, it's basically implementing more cards. So they, and they have some weird abilities. These are the promo ones. Uh, the other ones are in the box here. But they have, they have the normal abilities, but they also have some wacky abilities. Like the Wraith has hidden roles and stuff like that. Like, so uh, there's definitely more work to it, but not probably more than like implementing any more, any other expansion. We probably also do some extra cool visuals and stuff, so we are planning to do Sentinels of the Ninth, don't worry. Uh, all right, here I am back in the card tester. Where did I go? Hey, there's my card. It's lovely. Sorry, so ability box, these are actually get generated and put into the ability panel. So I'm going to paste the thing, and I'm going to put it in here. And you need to always paste stuff inactive. I don't know why. And it's way down there. Okay. How about you just fill the space, explore the studio space. Ho ho, what? No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted to be on this one. Yeah. What option shift? Click. Okay, so now it's there and I can make it fit where I want, which is here. I don't know why it doesn't have a, I don't have the right thingies anymore. Uh, Let me use my magical keyboard shortcut. Does that help? No, it doesn't help. And it's now, okay. Oh, because the scale is like tiny, weird. That's why. Scale, scale being weird. There we go. Copying and pasting in Unity can be hazardous to your health. Yeah, this is definitely like I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to actually make this take up most of the space because the stars are going to be down there and move this across a little and move these across a little too. I mean, this is all, doesn't have to be all done right now, but you know. We want our fun facts to fit. How are their fun facts going to fit if their label's in the wrong place? The Unity UI is winning. It's very powerful and very clever. It's too clever. Uh, and I'm not really doing a good job of setting the anchors and stuff. Uh, typically what I'll do when I make something like this is I'll like rough it all in how I want and then go through and make all the anchors to be exactly how they should in terms of like what's connecting to what and how are, how are things uh, positioned. This has like a Z position, what? Yeah. Don't copy and paste stuff, I guess, because crazy stuff happens. Like, the anchor is minus seven. Like, what? <laughs> All right, I just, I have a handy script that sets the anchors to the corners of the corners of the anchors that lets you just, like, say, All right, you're at 40% and 10%, and it just works for it. Works really nicely. That helps you make things that can scale and maintain their proportions. Uh, all right, that's one thing Unity, our NGUI has like a little more easy to understand anchoring system, but it's also, I think, probably not as good overall. Uh, okay, so we've got the card back. If we run it, it's probably going to have a problem. Uh, we've got a null reference. And so this is because we're looking at the card back now. There is actually no team name label. So we're going to have to actually, excuse me, do some null checks in some here, because sometimes a card view is not going to have all of the things that another card view might have. Uh, and so we'll put some null checks in. Uh, we know there's no team color business, um, 
here we can just sort of, yeah. We just won't have a team color library on this one because it's not necessary. And that should work at least. And actually I probably need to delete this team color library and we don't have any team color graphics, zero. Unity can build robots and other stuff. That is true. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna apply this. Oh, another danger of Unity. I was in play mode and so my, oh, my changes did save because I applied a prefab, but normally that's not gonna work. <laughs> If you make changes in play mode, they aren't saved, which is like by, it's intentional and it makes sense, but it's also like sometimes catches you. There's some scripts out there that uh, help with that. Uh, okay, so good. So that's working. We're getting his picture. I mean, obviously it's not like the cool black and white one, but you know, uh, we have a position label. We have a title. Uh, we don't have a fun fact in there yet, or the abilities, or the number. So let's do the easy ones first. Let's fill in the fun fact and stuff like that. So I think we actually, I have a fun fact. I have some properties already made here that I can help bring things, things up to. Uh, right, that's actually the wrong type. It was supposed, to, I didn't realize that when I made it. Let's see, card number, image. Where are you, script, card number image, and card number label, and we zoomed in, okay. So we'll apply that, and actually, what's gonna happen now is when I play, it's gonna be invisible, because when you instantiate an object that's inactive, it just is like, yep, you did that. So, one thing you often wanna do is, just make your game act object active. All right, so let's see. So we added the card number. So let's put that in here. And here we know that in the front side, we don't actually use the card number. So uh, if, the, if that exists, we will uh, set it. And I think every one has a card number, even though some of them aren't numbers. They're like, I think the scholar is 8P. Number is a string. Uh, all right, we also found that uh, we wanted the title to always be uppercase, so we may as well do that. Uh, now, one thing I noticed actually is the, um, position is in lowercase on here. And actually there's also uh, more information. You have the headedness and the type of picture. So we'll get to that. Put a sticky note in that. Or maybe instead of a sticky note, uh, we'll say to backside position label stuff. Uh, but there's the fun fact. Let's do that. If we have our fun fact label, And even before we're doing that, I'm going to say to do different fun fact images. I don't know, I'm curious, does Unity have a different fun fact image? No. Kind of like a little robot fun fact image, but she doesn't. Uh, all right, so if the label's not null, we're going to uh, set the text. Definition.fun fact. All right, and let's see where we are then with that. Yes, so Unity is our game engine and Parse is a uh, server backend system. And Baron Blade is our CEO. <laughs> hey, cool. So we have a fun fact and it actually matches. It doesn't say fun fact. I think we're gonna have to Add that in. What's denigent? Oh, that's something with between. Uh, 
All right, so King Lonnie's is all in caps. That's good. We got our number there. We got our fun fact. We'll fix that up. All right, so, and then we go on to the ability box. So let's uh, hook that up. So first I want to uh, do this. Uh, fun fact. We will make the fun fact say fun fact. And right, so the what's that? Yeah, it's abilities panel. Abilities panel is this control that can have those boxes. So yeah, okay, that's good. So let's do that. It's not actually an ability box, it is a abilities panel. And our variable name can be the same. Uh And we'll just do this for now before we hook it up. Unity and, oh yeah, and actually on our Trello board, we have Omnitron. We have an Omnitron user that is like for API access and stuff. So if beta testers report a card, Omnitron helps. Uh, let's see, okay. So we have an abilities panel now we can hook up. And I don't think we're gonna have a trait label. I'll get rid of that. And actually, let's see if the fun fact thing shows up right. Yep, fun fact. So like that's getting all cut off now, but that's that's more of an implementation detail. We have the position label thing, and we have the abilities panel we want to populate. So um, let's do that. Now the abilities panel is configured with an actual card, not a definition. And that's annoying. Uh, so here's a, here's a spot where you'd look at it and say, so the difference here is this was this has been been used in the um, in the game view, like when a game is actually happening, but uh, card views are going to have to be shown like when um, outside of a game, right? Like when you're browsing cards or whatever. So there isn't necessarily going to be a game in progress that uh, you can do. And so if we want to use this, we might have to change it to be able to work with definitions, which are like the data of a card versus a card, like an instantiation of a card. Uh, and I think all the information has to do with the definition, I think. Maybe this might be annoying. Maybe this is something for another day. Um, because I have to go through and change all, probably refactor these to handle definitions. Or, well, no, maybe not. Um, yeah, I'll have to see whether it makes sense to change these or to change the card view to require, I mean, it's not the end of the world if the card view requires a card, we can just like instantiate one um, with it. But uh, I'm just gonna write here, to do abilities panel expects a card, but we have a definition. Uh, so we're just gonna punt on that today, I think, because it's already, 3.30 Eastern, so yeah. Let's see, let's get the other position thing figured out. So, fear not, we will have an ability box on the cards. Uh, but not today, because there's more to deal with there. So, right, so here with the abilities, one of the things we saw here is that on the back side, it's a little different. It's not uppercase and it has more information uh, and then if we, this is like kind of hokey way to change it right now. Actually, well, I just, why don't I do this? Where's my input field? You go there and I'm going to make a checkbox. 
Is there a checkbox? Toggle. It's so little. Why is it so little? It's eating me. <laughs> How can I make it not so tiny? Oh, I see. It's this tiny, teeny tiny, itsy bitsy. That's more like it. That's probably too big. <laughs> and this can just be right aligned. And all I want is to say, is it the front of the card? Oh, and the check mark is also teeny tiny. Sure. I think my UI is set up at a higher resolution than Unity is expecting. So that can just go there. That looks gross, but this is a developer thing, so. That's fine. Uh, so that's it. A, U, a toggle thing. So let's go to the card tester and add something to hook up to it. Toggle. Uh, side toggle. We'll call it a front side toggle because on means front, off means back. Uh, and then here, We'll just add a, we'll call this card front prefab, like card back prefab. This is all gonna be obviously a little better because it's not just this screen that's gonna be creating cards, but uh, you know. So here, and we're gonna just make a prefab to decide between, our variable to decide between these uh, front side toggle that value on toggle. Is nope. I don't know from this class. That's why we have documentation. Is on. Okay. But what's the current value? Is it? is on, no, it's not dot value, which I would expect, anyone know? Anybody, Bueller, Bueller? Where's my, Unity toggle value to the internet. This is the other other half of programming. It says there's an is on. Hey checkbox, how does it work? Like I should be able to look at it and get the value. Is on. Alright. Is there another class that is I'm just going to go for it. Oh, I'm probably freaking out about my bad syntax. It's probably my own fault. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. That's working. Sometimes editors don't like it when you screw up the syntax and then autocomplete goes nuts. All right, so. And I can also have a thing, might be handy to uh, uh, side toggled. Let's do that and have it like re, I can just have it, I can probably just have it call the same one. Eh, I want to have a different method because I want to do something else. We could do like a flip animation, something cool. All right. 
Uh, okay, so we call that side toggle so I know what it is. And where's my view controller class? So we have our side toggle, and now we don't have any hookups to the prefabs because I renamed it and that makes things go away. Excuse me, but I have a back and I have a front and I'm going to save that. And now I should be able to switch between the front and the back whenever I want. Oh, I didn't hook up that part. <laughs> Let's hook up the value change event, shall we? Side mm. toggled. Almost was a glorious success, but usually it's not. It's like, wait, it didn't work. There we go. Toggle, 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 toggle. Uh, and then if I can like put in a different one, it'll be the same. Like I can go to Leslie Lou. Oh, but yeah, the picture matter thing. I need to fix that too. How about Dan Martini? Yeah. The Pocatello Hammers. All right, so good. So that was a diversion. That happens. I wanted my environment to be a little better. So the reason why I did that was because I wanted to be able to switch between these things and show you that. So on the front, uh, it just says second base, and that's what it says on the card. But on the back, it says second base right. And on pictures, it actually says uh, more. It also says whether they're finesse or control. So we want to handle that. And that's sort of, this is sort of a little game logic thing. Um, so one thing that's interesting here is that we need to know in this code at this point now, um, up until this point, we never really had any logic in here that says it's the front side of the card or the back side of the card. It just has to do with like, do you have a sprite that I can assign the sprite to? Yeah. Do you have a label I can put text in? Go ahead. It didn't really care what side it is. But now we're actually going to care what side it is because it's the same thing, but on different sides. Um, we could just have two different labels and one of them is like the position label and one of them is like the position label plus. And, but we're going to need to know what, whether the card's on the front or the back anyways. So um, we may as well do that. So there's one thing I'm going to add is a property for a card type. Uh, and this is going to be, and actually this can be private or yeah, this can be public, I guess, whatever. Uh, it's not going to be set. It's something I don't want, want to be set by the prefab. So, but I want to be able for this to get it. Uh, so actually if I do a property, I can do that. So only this class will be able to set the card type, but others can ask what card type it has. Uh, but then we're also going to want to have, I think, uh, is front side. Um, and that's going to be on the prefab, so I can say I'm the front side or I'm the back side. Uh, and here in this configure method, we can actually set the card type um, from here. All right, so here we have different things for the position label. So we'll say uh, if we're the front side, we just do this. Uh, but if we're in the back, we do other things. Uh, and it's going to depend on the card type as well. So uh, we're, we can set up a string here and build it up. So we're going to definitely have the actual position, like that is the first thing on the back, is what the position is. So uh, we can still do that. Uh, yeah. And but we have these little ads 
They're not dashes, they're like dots. Uh, I kind of want to do like a format string. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, It's a decision format, so if uh, this dot card type is a pitcher, uh, the decision format is like zero. It's not a dash, it's like a little bullet point. Let's put it in there. I'm in a Mac. Oh, wait, but if this editor doesn't, that's annoying. It doesn't have the special character window. Mono develop, which a problem. Uh, smiley face, put in an emoji. I think it looks like this bullet operator. I'm sure I can ask Daryl what it is, but uh, let's go with this one. The katakana middle dot. I think, did I copy and paste it? Let's see. Nope. Uh, come on, where do you go? Emoji and symbols, it's just gone. All right, I'll use a dash. <laughs> uh, and I'll change it later. So, and then we have the handedness and then the type. Uh, and actually I'll just do the default position is the default is a batter and it's just like that. And then we can just use a string format. Like this. And we put in our things. So the first thing is always the position name. Uh, why don't we put this up here? used by both of them. That just makes an uppercase version. This puts it in here. So we also have, um, wait, yeah, so the format, usually your format's in here, so it's a little weird, but um, we're actually building, the, deciding on the format ahead of time. Uh, we have the handedness, so we have uh, the definite, I guess it's player definition. Positions don't have handedness, I don't think. Handedness, and that's an enumeration, but it is an enumeration that I think, yeah, is just the same string. It happens to be the same string. Uh, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, where are we? Card view. And finally, the third, there's this third parameter here for pictures. Uh, and it's actually, yeah, so that's going to be a variable that we need to pass in only if it's uh, a pitcher. Yeah, maybe this is kind of weird. I'm going to say, I'm going to do this. Actually, yeah, the definition probably knows what card type it is. Yeah, I don't even need to have a property of that. It might be good to have, but I'm not going to use it in here because it's not necessary. Um, all right, so instead of this, I'm going to say, right, I actually don't need this. I'm going to just do it like this. So, string position text. And when it's a batter, we're gonna do just this. And I'm gonna use that format. And then when it's a picture, I'm gonna use this format. I think that's gonna be clearer in the end because we have to, if it's a pitcher, we actually have to get the, uh, and I 
don't want to use the definitions card type. Uh, we have to get the pictures. Um, what you call it? The pictures uh, style or whatever it is. So we actually need to get the picture definition. And we know it's going to be a picture definition because it's a picture. So uh, as picture card definition. Uh, and we can then pass in picture card definition, picture definition dot do 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 picture type. And I think that again is like it's an enum, but it's an enum that has English words in it, so it'll be fine. All right. And then we're just going to set the text to that variable we built in. And if it's none of those types, then there is no position, and I still can't get my cards out of the box. We'll do. We haven't even started on doing supports yet, so. Uh, and that's not a to do anymore. Uh, all right, that all looks reasonable. Uh, I'm going to just mention here on the back side. Pictures and batters have different information in this label. Let's see if I screwed all up. Probably not. Localized changes. I still have a debug log that says yay. I hope everyone likes that. So on the front side, we still, oh, it puts, what? Oh, right. We didn't set the, we didn't set that on the prefab. And Boolean's default to false, so that one needs to be is front side. Yes. I did screw it all up. Not really. All right, so Dan Martini, second base. That looks like it's right to me. On the flip side, Dan Martini, second base, dash right. It's not a dash, really, but it's close. Um, Good. So let's see about a picture. So oh, I have to go. This is annoying. I still have to do this silly thing. I'm just gonna do this for now. Make it something I can pass in instead of having to edit the code every time. Card type is going to be picture. Good. And I'm going to use Leslie Lou. She is great. So Leslie Lou, picture, and on the back side, position label. All right, so something screwed up. What did we screw up? Probably it's not really that class because I cheated. So why isn't it that, why is it not a picture card definition? So what happened here is it's null. Um, most likely I think it was a null reference exception. Yeah, so null reference because if you cast with as uh, and it's not that class, uh, you just get null back. Um, because like, what are you doing? So why, what else could it be? I guess it's because I'm creating it like that. I don't really like how we create cards. It's weird. Uh, okay, so where's picture card definition? Do we have to like do like an if this then that? Probably. Yeah, that's gross. I want to. Well, I think we'll make a factory in the engine that returns the right thing because that's a, that's been a pain in the butt. Uh, okay. 
return definition definition equals null. All right, if type. All right, we can switch, I guess. Should not have to do this. Just saying. Uh, it should be a factory that I can pass these two things in and get the to get the thing that I want. But for now, we'll do this. So so it'll work on the live stream. All right and. Good. Should be good. We should get the right kind of card. Definition now. All right, we have less than blue. All right, pitcher right power. Look at that. Well, that's all but the ability box. This is gonna be flipped for you probably. I guess it has been the whole time. Uh, the ability box and the trait aren't there, but Pretty much the rest of it is, uh, and now we have cards in the game. Uh, they're not in the game game, but uh, you know we have them here in the test scene, and we can bring them over uh, into the game as a next step. But I think we're out of time today because it is five o'clock Atlantic, which is plenty long. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my changes are saved. And my commit is lovely. So let's do that. And if you have any questions, you should ask them in the chat now while I'm tidying up. I will type that. All right, so we have this card back and the card front had some additions to it. The test scene, the card view is where most of the work was here, as you can see. And the view controller had a few improvements to it, so. Uh, and I'm going to call in it that also initial will work on player card backs. All right, and we'll see if there's any changes on from Jennifer. Doesn't look like it. I'm sure she will be looking forward to making these here. Look more like this, and this look more like this. So watch out for that next time, I'm sure. Uh, and if you're wondering where we're going to be using the cards, so we talked about how, um, or I talked about, I guess, uh, how we're going to need them in the like when you're setting up a game. Like right now, when you're setting up a game, it's just like this little toggle control just so we can do it really quickly. Um, but you know, this is gonna, it'll be a little similar to Sentinels on phone where like it pops up a list of different cards uh, and you can like look at them in detail and, and everything. Uh, and you can set up your lineup card is the sort of conceit that we've got for that. Um, as well as in the game, um, pull this up. So as you can see, we've got the abilities here, but you'll be able to click on or tap on at the bottom to bring up the full card abilities for either player, uh, as well as on the right side up here. This doesn't do anything right now, but this is going to pop up like team list, like the lineup card for both teams. So you can see what the relief pitcher is, what the next batters are and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, so it's a card game. So cards are important, but so far we haven't needed them, but we're gonna have them in the game. Don't worry. And thank you for joining me while I make it happen. And I think that's it for now. I think uh, we're gonna see what we think about how the stream went today, and uh, maybe we'll be back next week, maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll let you know. Uh, I don't know if there's any other notes. Um, I would say, 
check out the Sentinels of Earth Prime Kickstarter. It is ending very soon. Uh, if you're watching this, you're probably aware of it, but if you're not, uh, and you're on Twitch and not on YouTube in the future, uh, you should go back it right now, because there's only five hours left. If you're on, watching on YouTube, it's too late. Too bad. Uh, so that's going to be me signing off. I'm going to press the button to make it go to the ending card. Have a good day.